For Krima Media's Policy, I'm Sashni Mudli. Researcher and analyst Professor Raymond Satner joins me for Satner's View, a weekly commentary on South Africa's political scene. Welcome, Professor. Thank you. The level of animosity shown towards Jacob Zuma in Parliament this week seems to have reached new levels. What does this signify? You know, I think that uh, when people walk out of Parliament, when they call you a criminal, uh, when um, you have been found by the Constitutional Court to have been in conflict with the Constitution, and you still go to Parliament and you have to face up to this, uh, I think it is throwing the institutions of state into disarray. Now, there's a very cautious statement by Joel Nechitenje, which I saw in Eyewitness News, saying that uh, he's not sure that Zuma is, such a, is necessarily a great leader anymore. Now, I didn't know he was a great leader. That is something that is, um, I've got to uh, process. And I think what is important is that w the background to all of this is not just Nkandla. There's 783 charges where taxpayers have pay, spent lots of money on appeals that have gone up to the highest court and where Jiba, Jiba, who I'll come to in a second, uh, withheld these spy tapes. And when it got to the Supreme Court of Appeal, they admitted they had no case to not hand them over. So they've been wasting a lot of money. But in the course of this, a number of institutions of state have been discredited by the unwillingness of Zuma not only to act um, in a manner befitting the head of state, in relation to himself, but also in relation to the appointments that he's made. Uh, we know that yesterday, Jiba was struck off the role of advocates. Now, when you are not on the role of advocates, you are not allowed to occupy a position in the National Prosecuting Authority. Now, she says she's staying there till the appeal, his law, her lawyer says staying there till the appeal is heard. Now, I don't understand legally how that can be possible. But also, uh, Hassana, when he was head, asked for her to be suspended uh, in, the, in relation to the Bar Council bringing this case. Um, nothing was done about it. And in fact, they paid him off to leave the job. In the case of SARS, you've got a lot of things going on that are irregular and they seem to bear a relationship to President Zuma. In the case of Tom Moyane, he was very quick to bring actions which was with the Hawks that don't seem to hold water against Pravin Gordon and others. With regard to his deputy, what is interesting is not just the deputy maybe having creamed off money, but the deputy operates within a restructured tax collection section related to the very wealthy people. Now, Pravin Gordon, as Minister of Finance, has asked Tom Moyane, please, to stop that restructuring until they've discussed it. He defied him. Now, it's unheard of in a situation like this where someone who is a subordinate defies the minister like this. And we can s say this is a result of the way Zuma governs. He uses his powers in order to appoint people to positions who can benefit him and themselves derive benefits, sometimes legally, sometimes illegally. He uses it in order to ensure that someone, some people, even if their performance is really below par, like Dudu Mieni, continues to get more and more positions. She's got a position in uh, water in KZN as well as SAA, and there doesn't seem to be any attempt to limit this. And Zuma has up to now been able to rely on the support of the ANC. 
And we can't say that it's Zoom alone because even um, very recently we've seen, although the ANC is demoralized and more quiet in their defense of him, they have not, uh, they have not come out to censure him for anything or to demand more than his version of an apology. So I think we're in a stalemate in the sense that Zuma uh, is getting humiliated there. He is, I mean, to stand there and be called a criminal, all of this with your children possibly watching TV, it's not an easy thing to have happen, to have COPE walk out. And the reasons why COPE and EFF walk out relate to the Constitution. But why is Zuma prepared to face these insults? Is it not better for him to resign? You see, um, Zuma has to ask himself, um, has he set in place uh, provisions which will avert his being charged after he leaves office and enable him to hold on to his ill-gotten wealth after he's held office? Because it often happens in a corrupt uh, leadership that when the leader leaves office a year or two later, it happened with Chalubo in Zambia, say. Um, a year or two later, they bring him, haul him before the courts. And this is what the Premier League has been busy with, trying to get uh, a successor to Zuma that will ensure that Ubaba is able to enjoy his retirement in peace without it being in a prison and that he enjoys the wealth that he's accumulated through a number of means. And they perceive Nkosazana Tlamini Zuma as more likely to secure this for him than someone else. Now, Sir Ramaphosa, on the other hand, uh, you have Ventura writing in the newspapers, they should just appoint Sir Ramaphosa as provisional president. But now, that's a very, maybe that's a good idea, but how do you achieve that? Um, you know, the real, in the real politics of South Africa, you have to have the majority of the ANC agree on that. Now, many of those people who would have to uh, prevail on Zuma to leave office because Zuma doesn't seem to feel that the price of being called a criminal is greater than the price of leaving office. So those who, who would have to prevail on Zuma are themselves indebted to Zuma for the positions they hold, for the contracts they've got, for the appointments of their relatives and all of these things. So we've got a situation that is very hard to see being remedied. This thing with Jiba is a very interesting and with SARS in that you've got a uh, people who were accusing others in the case of SARS are themselves potentially facing criminal charges because of Mo if Moyane knew of potentially criminal activities he ought to have reported it and he knew in May. In the case of Jiba, uh, as I've said, it's possible, it's not in my view legal for her to continue to hold the position you might find that the Helen Sussman Foundation or Freedom Under Law or some other organization brings an application for her to be relieved of her duties. Now, having the NPA weakened in its present uh, composition, let's say it's weakened by having Abrams and Jiba there, but to have, have Jiba removed weakens the resolve of the NPA, let's say the appeal court, they say restore the charges, maybe it will happen more easily with Jiba gone. So one way or another, the presidency is now lacking in authority of any sort. It's uh, in total disrepute. Um, it's not an institution. I mean, this statement of John Nishitendi is quite shocking in a way that he no longer, may no longer be great. Now, uh, someone who has besmirched the Constitution the way he has, how can he be great? And I think that is uh, the problem, that there's no easy way out of this, but 
there's no, it's not easy to stay where we are. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. That was Professor Raymond Zatner speaking to Krima Media's policy about loss of authority at the top.